Well, then let's jump into this episode of Kicking Tables. Niall Crabtree, the creator of Langskip. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So why don't you tell our audience what Langskip is? Like, what kind of game is this? What's the story behind it? Okay, so Langskip, which you can see here, prototype version, um, is a two to four player bluffing game. It also has, it's also a racing game as well, but the primary um, mechanism is a bluffing game. So you are, these, uh, you play as one of four uh, little Vikings, um, which you can see here, little cardboard pieces, and your aim is to get from uh, the bottom of the board to the top of the board. And the way you do this is you play cards, which almost all of them say um, move one. and uh, But some of them say, for example, um, move one and force a player to discard a mischief token. So pretty much all of them uh, get you to move up the board, uh, but some of them allow you to affect other players as well. But the key difference here uh, with a lot of other games is that you play um, all cards face down and then you say what you played so you could potentially lie about what you played and then uh, do the action of the card that you that you said so um, for example i could play uh, um, a valkyrie face down um, but i could say that i played a freak and then i would actually be able to uh, force player to discard a mischief token uh, um so yeah uh, it goes around uh, clockwise and it's the first person to get the space 20 on the board um, but yeah, you can lie about cards, but you can also call people out online as well. And if you successfully call someone out online, so you say, I think you're lying, you flip over the card, you actually gain a mischief token, like I mentioned previously, you can steal these other players. And those allow you to um, play uh, Loki and his children, um, which are cards in the game, to their full potential. So for example, this is a card which is kind of like... Um, I don't know if you have it in the in, in North America, but Marmite, where it's very like uh, divisive. So some people love Yarmulgander and some people hate Yarmulgander. Um, so he says that uh, you can swap positions with the nearest player, which could in fact be someone behind you. So you want right. to make sure that you get the get that right. Or uh, you can use a mischief. Sorry, you can use a mischief token to swap positions with anybody on the board. So if you're in position. Position three and someone's position nineteen about to win. If you, as long as you have a mystery token, you can change the game. <laughs> that's right. Which really some people don't like. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just a it's, it's a bluffing game. Uh, if you like coup, but you're not a big fan of the uh, player elimination, then this is this is kind of like right up your alley. So yeah. So what is what is your um what what's your personal strategy? Uh, what deciding when to when to lie when to when to tell the truth what do, what do you do mm -hmm. um well what i like to do is because there's, there's 18 cards in the game and you actually get a similar to love letter is you, you get a uh, a reference card and on the reference card it tells you the cards all their abilities as well as um how many cards there are in the deck so with most cards there is only two of them and with some cards there's only one of them so what i like to do is i like to wait until i have uh, a card that there's only one of, say, Thor or Odin or something like that. And I use the other card in my hand because you have two cards in your hand and I lie about um, that card being Thor or Odin because at that point I know for sure that no one else has that card. Oh, so I'm not just going to, I'm not, yeah, I'm not just going to lie about Thor and then someone's got it in the hand and then can easily accuse <laughs> me. So that's like my main strategy. Okay, cool. So what differentiates this from, you mentioned, mentioned Coup, um, you know, games like Werewolf and, and Coup, like the other deception, what's the, the big thing that differentiates uh, Langskip from those? Um, well, there's a few, um, uh, the uh, Hairy Game Lords, I don't know if you know them, but another, YouTube, another uh, YouTubers um, talk specifically about the main difference between this game and Coup, and a few things that they mentioned, which I agree with, uh, the time length of the game is about 20 to 30 minutes, whilst around the Coup can be about 5 to 6 minutes, So, and you can get out of Coup very, very quickly as well, so it kind of feels like you never really get into the game. Um, mm -hmm. A similar game, but you didn't mention, was uh, Love Letter in terms of just the ratio of cards. Like, it almost has an exact one-for-one -one ratio of cards. Okay. Um, like, for example, in Love Letter, there's five cards. In this game, uh, there are five Valkyries and stuff like that. Um, but the main difference here is that multiple times in the game, the deck gets refreshed. Um, so you go through all the cards, you get reshuffled, and uh, everyone redraws. And the, so the main difference is, is that the percentage chance of cards being drawn is always fluctuating. 
Uh, whilst with landscape, uh, not sorry, with love letter, um, there isn't really that uh, change as well. Um, you can't count, yeah. card, count cards as much as, as you could uh, in, in those other but ones. No, uh, no. Well, you, you can count cards, but the percentage is always changing uh, as yeah. well, which I think is really interesting. Um, and also, I feel like there's just a, a lot of ways to catch up and stay in the game if you're not having a great time. And also, unlike most bluffing games, um, you don't if you're not comfortable with lying, which a lot of people are, you can still partake in the main uh, mechanism in the game, which is like getting mischief tokens uh, by yeah. calling people out and lying instead. Uh, so we're trying to include everyone. I'm curious. The theme of the game has it always been, um, you know, Norse Norse gods, or is this something that sort of got added with, you know, the success of the Marvel movies? It's <laughs> actually it, it wasn't massively to do with the Marvel movies, but it was originally, and it was funny you mentioned it. I did just post a dev diary talking about it, but it was originally um, themed around cats, like cute cats, okay. because the artist for this this game um, at the time she was focused on making like sticker sets for Etsy. And one of the sticker sets was these like cute little sheep, and the other one was like cute little cats. And like that artwork is really cool and really appealing, so uh, we could transfer that onto a board game. But then I talked to my brother, which also uh, who also helps out with the company, and he was like, "There's so many cat games on Kickstarter <laughs> all the time." I mean, I know that uh, more and more each week there's uh, Norse and the uh, Viking games on Kickstarter as well. Uh, but at the time, that was less so. Um, so yeah, that was one of the main reasons why I made the switch. And it turns out the artist is also massively into Norse mythology. And when you're ever collaborating with someone mm -hmm. and they instantly get super excited about an idea and you're torn between two ideas, just go with the idea they're excited for. Because um, <laughs> they're most likely going to uh, work harder on it. So yeah. So there's uh, how many cards, how many different cards are there in the deck that you can potentially Ooh. use? And wh which, which one of those is your favorite one? Which one do you are you always excited to get when you're playing? Uh, so there are nine unique cards, um, a total of 18 uh, in, uh, cards in the game. And to be most excited, well, what I really like, uh, because it leads into a lot of really good combos, is Hell. Because uh, Hell, uh, what she allows you to do is she allows you to look at the top three mm -hmm. discarded cards. Um, and for example, in one of my recent games, which I played when I was playtesting, um, at one point, someone was like two spaces away from winning, and I, they didn't have a turn for about four turns because we kept on playing Hell and then using a Freya, which was already in the deck, uh, which oh uh, allows, yeah, which skips a turn, and then we use another Hell, and I think someone lied about playing a Freya at some point as well, <laughs> and it, it, we managed to, be able to catch quite considerably up as well. So, uh, yeah, Hell for combos is really cool. When Tico and I were playing, we found that, uh, one, either we didn't want to lie for fear of mm -hmm. getting caught, or second, we didn't want to call out a lie just in case, like, for fear of losing something. It's, it's like, it's like, it becomes that almost game of, when do I, when do <laughs> I try to lie, or do I lie at all? Like, it's, it's so hard to decide when to do that, you know? It was very interesting how often we didn't lie and just actually did and said this this is the card I'm playing and it actually was. You know, very I think what mm -hmm. I think twice I may have lied and actually got away with it because it's like you don't want to call yeah. someone out because then you're going to lose something yourself. You're going to go back a step if you if you call out wrong. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes I found that it like sometimes you're 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 not calling something out even though you know that it might be a lie because it's opening up an opportunity for you to lie later right mm -hmm. too yeah yeah uh what i've also found as well is that um well yeah it was kind of i, I wanted to do this from the beginning um i, I didn't like how if it, uh, just to go back to coup again there's some cards which you get at the start of the game and you just like sigh like you don't want these cards you you want different cards like people oftentimes want the like the duke and the captain combo or something like that yeah. like with my with my card with, with, with langskip i kind of wanted every card to feel not just worth playing but like good to play um and they, they even uh, the way i tried to combat the idea of just like playing cards is like, i wanted that's why there's five valkyries in the in the deck because that is a card which you can easily uh lie about playing so yeah, yeah, yeah you could say that you play a valkyrie and most people are going to believe you because it's five of them. right um, so yeah 
yeah. So, so uh, let's talk a little bit about your campaign. Um, you know, games like this, it's it's kind of hard to add new cards into the into the mix <laughs> because you've got such a good balance. What sort of things are you doing for your stretch goals in your in your campaign? Um, so one of the main things which I want to do is alternate artwork because pe- one thing with people, I mean, they, they like the gameplay, of course, but like one of the things which you really like is the artwork. Yeah. And so I wanted to, because there's so many great stories as well, by, uh, by including um, Norse gods that we can have, and having like alternate art versions of those cards would be really cool to add into the game. But um, it, it's not just going to be alternate art. They will also have slightly different um, powers as well. Okay, um, okay. And to, as you said, the, the, it feels quite balanced. The game, so in to make it like keep that balance, um, it's not just going to be added into the game. It's going to be a swap. So, okay. for example, if there's an alternate art version of Thor, which there might be, um, you you swap out that version of Thor with the one that's already in the game if you want a slightly different experience. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have our lightning round coming okay. up next. I don't know if you've seen this before or not, we're going to ask you to find a little bit more about you and your board gaming habits. So these are all board game related questions. Just first thing that comes top of your mind. You ready? Yes. All right. Uh, purchasing games, local game store or online? Local game store. Okay. Uh, campaign or legacy? Campaign. Okay. Uh, most recent game purchase? Oh, what was that? Um, are we including Kickstarter? Sure. sure. Um, I think in that case that was the Binding of Isaac Four Souls Requiem. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. A uh, game that you most want to add to your collection? Uh, probably Parks. Parks. Oh yeah, yeah. Gorgeous game. That's a hard game to come by too. It is as well. All right. Uh, science fiction or fantasy? Uh, sci-fi. Sci-fi. Uh, favorite childhood game? Uh, um, there was this game. I don't know if it um, it was in um, America, but it, it was called Payday, which it was it was yeah. um, it's, yep. yeah, it's, yeah, it sounds yep. like Monopoly, but it is it's quite different. That was probably the game I played most of the yep. kids. Yeah, we, had, we Payday. had Payday here yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Star Wars. All right. Mm-hmm. And last question: worker placement or area control? Uh, worker placement. Awesome. All awesome. right. And that is our <laughs> lightning round just to get to know you a little bit outside your own game. But uh, before we let you go, Niall, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. But what, what more do you want our audience to know about Langskip and why should they go ahead and back this game? Um, well, it's uh, well, what, what are the things which I want to do currently in the, the sort of uh, progression of the company is just make it as affordable as possible. Uh, so um, the game is going to be uh, 15 pounds, which is about 21 dollars, wow. um, and I'm eating, I'm eating a lot of the costs in terms of uh, shipping for North America as well. Uh, so I think shipping is going to be something quite cheap, well, cheap currently uh, with right. the climate that we're in. I think it's going to be like nine dollars or something. So it's going to be a true. game, yep. yeah. And also, it's going to be manufactured in the UK, uh, which is uh, not massively great for unit costs from my end, but it's great for backers because they should get it just in time for Christmas, despite nice. it uh, launching in July. Um, and finally, uh, if you want to set your alarms uh, for when it launches, we're going to be doing a very limited run of these wooden wow. board slash boxes, Ooh. which are um, they're hand burned, hand um, etched, and um, it has a really cool latch. And it also, if you can open it, is a prototype. It can keep all the components inside as well, so you don't have to carry around the other box with you. Wow. Um, so that pledge, yeah, that pledge will include the base game um, as well as this, so you get everything. That's gorgeous. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. That is amazing. Of course, the Kickstarter starts on July 30th, so it's very soon. Yes. We will also have our preview of the game coming up. I'll put a link right up there for that, so check out our preview. But, Niall, thank you so much for coming on Kicking Tables to tell us more about Langskip. It is a fun game. Tico and I loved it. So uh, good luck with your campaign, and and, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, Make sure to check out Langskip on Kickstarter. It launches July 30th, and make sure to subscribe to OMG Nexus here.